Hello and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And today's topic is about atoms, atomic bonding, atomic parts, and how they work together. So we're at the very conclusion of this, going to build our very own atomic model, as well as a few tasty bonding treats to go along with it. So I have some notes. I've written down some things and diagrams in my journal that I would like to share with you, and I'd like you to write these down in your journal as we talk about them together. So pull out your journals, get ready to write, and get ready to learn. Now the first part is parts of an atom. So notice on the left I have drawn out an example taken from the periodic table where all the atoms and elements are listed of the example helium. Helium is a large part of our solar system, a large part of our sun, and the cosmos in general. So let's go through and talk about the parts and we'll build it as we talk about it. The first one happens to be the nucleus, which is the major brain of the atom. So that is where you find two major parts called the neutron in orange, neutral neutrons, and then you have protons with a positive charge, positive purple, there in the drawing. Now I have here Nutella, a plate, cookie icing, and some M&Ms, and I'm going to build the first part of our atom. Now the first part of our atom is the Nutella nucleus. So I'm going to remove the lid, take the knife, take a blob and smear it in the middle of my plate. So that center blob of Nutella represents our nucleus. And as the drawing shows on my uh, journal, we have different colors representing different parts of our atom. So I have neutrons in orange. So I have two neutrons in helium and to balance that out, I have two protons in blue. So those two pieces, the Nutella and the M&Ms, all together with the two protons and two neutrons represent our nucleus. The next step in our creation of the atom is the electron cloud. So all around the nucleus, you have what's called a cloud of electrons, where negatively charged particles will float and zoom around that nucleus. Now to represent that, I have some cookie icing in blue color, and like clouds, we're going to have them swirl around the nucleus in all different directions. Here's my electron cloud. There we go. So there's your electron cloud, and you'll have various electrons within this electron cloud. So with helium, it has two outer electrons. So I'm going to take one and two. So as you can see, you have a plate filled with an atom, and now you can eat your tasty helium atom. Now, to measure that, now, all of these atoms, like you and me, have mass. They have a weight as well. So, on the periodic table, as you see them listed, you see them listed as this one is, helium. The number two below helium is the atomic number. Let me move the things there. The atomic number, which tells you the number of protons. That's how I knew to put two of these purpley blue M&Ms here to represent my two protons. Helium also has two in representing two electrons. So your atomic number tells you your number of electrons and protons if you have a neutral balanced atom. 
Now on the bottom you have the weight or the mass, the atomic weight or atomic mass, some of those you find sort of interchanged, but it's better to say atomic mass since we're talking about a single atom. Now that is your protons plus your neutrons. So in order to find your neutrons, you'll have to do some math by subtracting the atomic number by the atomic weight, and that gives you a balanced, as we have here, 4 minus 2 gives you 2 neutrons, and that's why we have here 2, 1, 2 orange neutrons in our helium atom model. Now I want you to draw out hydrogen. And I want you to do that math. Based on what we did at the top, fill out your hydrogen section, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. So let's now draw hydrogen. So let's look at our atomic number. We have one and one, which means our atomic number is one from finding it on the periodic table, which from that atomic number one, we can conclude that it has one proton, and in a balanced atom, as this one is, it'll have one electron. So I'll get my red, so that has one electron. Balanced one proton, one electron. The atomic weight, or the atomic mass, here on the bottom, is equal to one, which means, from the above that we had, means there are a combo that atomic number of one represents protons and neutrons. And the way you find your number of neutrons, oh, let me write that down, that equals protons and neutrons. So we automatically concluded from at the very top with our atomic number, there's one proton, so I filled in one proton there. And the way you determine your number of neutrons is you subtract the number, the weight, the atomic weight from the atomic number, which is 1 minus 1, and that equals 0, which means we have 0 neutrons in a hydrogen atom. Next, we're going to go over how atoms bond with one another, and for this activity, we're going to only focus on these two types. There are more than this, but we're going to focus on these two types for this activity. The first is ionic, meaning that you have a single electron, represented by that M and M, which is equal to a negative charge pulling back and forth. And when you pull this back and forth, notice the faces, that electron is being pulled and yanked back and forth, back and forth from those two atoms creating a grumpy atom because this atom wants it more than this atom wants it, creating a negative positive charge pulling back and forth, sort of like a magnet pulling back and forth for negative positive charges. So the ionic bond is a stressful bond and it pulls this one electron back and forth like you're trying to share a toy but you're trying to fight over the toy at the same time. Now the next is the covalent bond which you're sharing two electrons. Now, when you're sharing these, you're actually truly sharing these together. So you're sharing them back and forth equally, and when you share those two together, that sort of balances out those two negative charges, creating a balanced, happy, very sharing of these electrons covalent bond. Now there are three types of covalent bonds, and those happen to be single, double, and triple. And we can represent these with marshmallows and pretzel sticks. So the first is a single bond, so that can represent with a single pretzel stick, and the marshmallow will represent an atom. So you connect the atom to the atom with the single bond. Think of the little bits of salt as the electrons that are being shared between back and forth 
the elements, so that would represent a single bond. A double bond would be one pretzel stick next to another pretzel stick. Now that is a double bond. So the single bond was a single pair of electrons, meaning two were shared in between. A double bond means two pairs, so four electrons shared between the two atoms. And the more bonds you have, the stronger the bond. So the triple bond is the strongest of the bonds. So three pretzel sticks. There we go, so we have our triple bond, and that is three pairs of electrons, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six electrons total being shared back and forth. And this is a very strong covalent bond of sharing of electrons. Now, this exercise showed you the bonding. I encourage you to build these. Now, if you don't happen to have marshmallows and your uh, pretzel sticks, you can draw them, or you could use other materials around the house like Play-Doh and sticks that you find outside. You can make these bonds with anything that you would like. But with these are tasty, so you can eat these as a snack afterward. Now this ends our atomic bonding uh, lesson for today. I encourage you to go out, write in your journal, draw out these pieces, and remember that science never stops. <laughs>